if you don't go, you don't know. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is so many individuals that are new to sales or they want to prospect, they're always looking for the shortcut or they come in yeah. and carry yeah. this ego with what they did prior to sales or prior to this new endeavor. And they try to apply whatever worked in that field to this one. And it doesn't. I mean, yeah. this is literally, you, you, it's an appointment game and you can't have an appointment game without a prospecting mindset. And you got to learn to love the suspects to start to find the prospects. So here's the thing, entrepreneurs, leaders, salespeople, we all want to create consistent, repeatable, and scalable ways to grow our business and our income. And we want to do it better, faster, and more seamlessly. Why? So we can actually enjoy our lives, take vacations, and spend the quality time that we want with the people that we love. How do we do all this without spending a fortune or running ourselves ragged? That's the big question. And this show is dedicated to the answer. Hey, welcome back to the podcast. I am so fired up to introduce you to my buddy, Sina. Uh, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, he and I were both keynoting Agent 2021. It's a Gary Vaynerchuk event. And I remember watching this guy speak and saying to myself, you know, that guy lights up the room. His energy, his charisma, his passion, his energy. Like I, I said, energy twice. Like that's how much energy he has. Like I have energy. This guy's got energy. So if you're in sales, if you're a sales leader, I don't care if you're in insurance, you're in real estate, you're in mortgage, uh, you know, you're working at a call center, it doesn't make a difference. What he brings to the table is something that each and every one of us can add into our own energy and mindset to be more successful. So uh, sit back, relax, enjoy my time with Sina Azari. Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. Today I've got Sina Azari. Sina, first of all, man, thank you, buddy. It's thank about, you, Tom. Thank it's you. About thank time, you for having me. Dude. Uh, VP of Present Financial Partners, a national field marketing organization. So Sina, I know what all those words are. What in the world does that mean? So a uh, field marketing organization or FMO is a company that contracts with multiple carriers and is essentially distribution for the multiple carriers to the field. So basically, you're like the broker's broker, right? Like We are the broker's broker. Right. I love how you uh, worded that. We actually, we, we've named ourselves the founders of what we call the Career Broker Agency. Oh, I love that. And the Career Broker Agency is most brokers are independent out there trying to build a career. And you know, it's tough when you're alone to really find yourself building a career without a team. Yes. So we've... Um, formed a, a housing opportunity for brokers to get together and have a team and to explode their business. So I want to be clear, like a lot of the people that uh, that I'm connected with, and it's funny, we were actually looking at the demographics on this a couple of days ago that uh, like we're crushing it right now on YouTube with the 17 to 19 year olds wow. and then like the 25 ish year olds. And it's fascinating. So some of them know me as like a real estate coach, but you know me as like, I'm a business coach, I'm a business strategist, I'm a strategic thinking accountability partner. So when, when you say that, I wanna be clear, like you're talking about you created a network inside of the insurance industry. Don't those already exist? Like um, there isn't already like a national association of? Uh, it's not a national association. We actually, we, we've, we've named it Career Broker Agency because most brokers, they're independent agents and not part of a larger team that's that's essentially a brokerage distributing multiple carriers. Got it, got yeah. it. Okay, yeah. cool. So one of the things that uh, everybody should know also is you recently became a coach with us. So yes. super excited about that Thank as we're working with, you know, more and more people outside of the real estate space, insurance, escrow, general, you know, general business, right? But insurance being a huge space, there's 1.1 million insurance agents in the country. Is that correct? Yeah. Over 1.1 million in the country, 300 plus thousand in the state of California alone. Really? Yeah. Is that just because like uh, California is just such a shit show? Like Ca California <laughs> is, is its own animal, man. Yeah. We're, we're the eighth largest economy in the country yeah. or, or in the world. Yes. In the world. Some say number six now, but yeah, um, I just read that too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Cali, Cali's always on its own. Love it, man. Well, <laughs> listen, when I got started in real estate, I think there were 600,000 agents in the U S wow. right. So, and I, you know, last time I checked, I think there's like 300,000 in California alone out of the, you know, call it 1.3 million members of NAR, but enough of all that stuff. Hey, shout out to NAR too, by the way. Yeah, man. absolutely. Yeah. So, so let's just talk about this. How long have you been in this space now? Cause we, we like, there's a bunch of questions I want to ask you sure, about sure. how you build it and then how you help others. And, and the thing I want to stress to people that are listening right now is uh, some of them might not be in the insurance business. I would even you know venture that a bunch of them aren't inside the insurance business. But the thing that I know is sales is sales, marketing is marketing, right. business building is business building, leadership is leadership, mindset is mindset, struggle is struggle. And, and you know, maybe outside of struggle, you've crushed it on everything. 
Well, I, I, I appreciate the, the confidence you give me. But, um, you know, I started the business in 2003 when I was 23 years old. I, yeah. I like most, walked into the insurance industry by mistake. Um, out of a Tell necessity. Tell us about that, yeah. Uh, my, my background is physiology. So I'm from the Bay Area. I went to San Francisco State University, got my degree in physiology, a lot of science classes, and my goal was to was to be a dentist. I was raised by a single mom who's a huge Tom Ferry fan, yeah. by the way, Tom. Yeah. Um, Big she's, shout out. she's your number one fan, I should say that. And uh, she said, hey, Sina, I, I migrated to this country in 79, and you and your sister have to grow up and become a doctor or a lawyer and get a degree and follow the, the corporate, you know, world of, of yeah, the American dream, company. right? Yeah, that's what yeah. it is, buy a house, et cetera. Yeah. So I study all these classes really to make this wonderful lady uh, proud of me for all the sacrifices she's made. And at 23, I, I get a, a bachelor's degree in physiology, all these chemistry classes, molecular biology, um, I mean, on and on and on. Marine biology, I had to learn about all these animals, et cetera. And I applied to about 16 dental schools and I don't get into any. Why? So my grades, you know, let, let's not okay. lie. My, my GPA, okay. um, you know, wasn't as high as it should be. And most dental classes or schools accept about 70 to 100 new students with mm -hmm. 5,000 plus applicants. Got it. So um, I wasn't playing to win when I was getting my bachelor's degree to follow that plan. I just didn't know. Yeah. And not getting into dental school, you know, 23 years old, depressed, not sure what to do. I was like, man, you can't keep living at home with mom now. You're a grown man. And everyone has this rule of at 18, get out on your, on your own. Well, for me, it wasn't 18. It was, yeah. it was whenever I could afford to. But yeah. at 23, I told mom, I said, you know what? Um, I'm not going to pursue dental school, but I, I got a job. Um, I got recruited by, by a national insurance company. I got a job and I'm going to be an insurance agent. Was that like straight out of a college campus recruiting situation? Uh, no, it or? was actually um, this gal that I had a crush on was the administrator for for this uh, oh. national firm. She was processing the applications <laughs> and we were talking on the phone. She was telling me how much commission yeah. these guys are making and said, Sina, yeah. why don't you come sell insurance? Yeah. So yeah. I went in for an interview. You're like, wait a minute, manager. cute girl talking big checks? Oh, I'm hot, in. hot chick, you okay. guys. And, okay. uh, and my wife's probably listening, but this girl was hot. She <laughs> yes. knows she is. Happily married, happily married. I ended up marrying the girl, by the way. That's why she's so hot, so. <laughs> That's even better. Oh my God, I never knew that story. Okay, so so let's, let's do like a little deep dive. You started in 2003. I mean, the insurance industry has been around forever, right? 100 and like 80, 90 yeah, plus years. I right? think the first thing ever sold actually, Tom, is insurance. I've heard that say, I mean, outside of, there's been many things that were sold before, but I know you mean like, professional sales, right? You know, well, uh, either professional sales or not, prof what, what I hear, the legend yeah, is that yes. um, prior to us selling anything, there was the barter system. Yes. And um, spices had the greatest value. Yep. So for uh, countries or, or entrepreneurs at that time mm -hmm. to move their spice from one area to another, they needed to have it insured from being robbed and stolen. Yes. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. So yeah. the security provided for them was the first sense of insurance. That's what I hear. That's the legend of the insurance industry. I actually really like that story. Yeah. Is that documented anywhere? You know, um, from what or I hear, like a, like a I, I believe Morton Salt is where it started okay. from. So maybe Morton's was the, was the first company to protect that, that sodium. I love it. I love <laughs> it. All right. So, so give us a little snapshot of uh, the last like 10, 15 years, because most of the people that are listening to this, they're a part of an industry that has dealt with, you know, the iPhone, my phone's over there, right? Like the internet of really web 2.0, the trans, like how we've gone into social media, how the world has shifted, more and more people creating content, people trying to stand out, trying to, you know, disrupt in some way or shape or form these archaic industries. Yeah. Has that happened at all in insurance? Uh, it's it's happening. Yeah, it's happening. Um, you know, right right now, it, the the industry has been very stale for a long time. But with this introduction to technology, not only has it disrupted it on the back office side for underwriting and issuing mm -hmm. policies, but a huge amount of disruption when it comes to distribution and getting in front of prospects. So yes, the industry is going through a significant change and uh, the opportunity could not be any greater right now. I was now. just going to say to you, because I mean, I obviously, you know, we know each other, so I know the opportunity is great, but what, what would you say? say to a person that's maybe listening to this, maybe they're that kid that didn't have the right GPA, yeah. right? And by the way, I just talked to a buddy of mine, big shout out to the CEO of Boomtown, right? Awesome. This huge company, right? Out of Charleston, South Carolina. Wow. I'm talking to Greer, the founder, and I'm telling him, oh yeah, my son's you know, first uh, semester in college wasn't as where he wanted it to be. And he goes, hey man, tell him no big deal. I got a 0.9 GPA my first Ooh, semester. <laughs> and he's the CEO of like a $400 million company, right? Wow. So like it actually, wow. I didn't tell my son the story right away. I'm, sure. I'm gonna save that one, but I was like, ding. Yeah. So somebody listening to this right now maybe is that guy, that gal. Maybe they're maybe they're in their early 20s, maybe they're sure. 50 and they're looking for a career change. What is the opportunity now in the insurance space? Do people make money or is it like people are dying everywhere and a few people make a lot at the top? 
Well, the insurance space, as with any, in my opinion, I believe in the 80-20 rule uh, yep. in any sales organization, but the insurance industry is the most lucrative industry that exists, Tom. Really? The most lucrative industry. So most, tell us Most that. mortgages are backed by the insurance companies. Yep. Um, you know, you hear about banks going under, you've never heard about an insurance company going under. Insurance companies, with respect, are in, are in the collection business. Yeah. We collect premiums based on the law of large numbers, and then when things go wrong, we end up paying out. And we know that... Um, Based on statistics, less of us will end up needing it. However, the probability of all of us using it is still there. Yeah. yeah. You know what's shocking for me is for the number of entrepreneurs that are listening to this right now, like I'll, I'll say these things like, look, you got to get your financial fortress in house, right? Like, you, you, do you have a trust? Do you have a will? Do you have life insurance? Do you have Aflac, right? That's like right. You have, like all these different insurances that we can have. And I was super lucky when I was a kid. My, my stepmom, who I oftentimes refer to as my mom because of just the wisdom that she instilled in me, primarily because she's Russian Polynesian. So she was just beating right. it into me, right? That's right, tough lady. Right, at like 20, she said, you should go get a variable annuity life insurance account. And wow. I was like, what's that? She's like, it's a whole life insurance policy, but it's really a savings account. So dude, I'm 48. Wow. I was funding $1,000 a month for basically the last 28 years. I haven't stopped. That's a cool story. And it's, it is one of the most, it was one of the easiest, most challenging savings accounts I've ever had in my life. But like, what a gift being told that at 20. That's very cool. Why do most people, like, is it a lack of awareness? Do, why do people not have, and this is not like a yeah. promotion of why everyone should like buy insurance, but it just feels like so obvious that most people just don't get it. Yeah, I, I, I believe it's more about priorities. You know, um, the question I ask most people is what is more important to you other than your family? And yeah. most people will say their house. Yeah. If they own a home. Yeah. Um, so if, if people are willing to just write that check for home insurance without worrying about it and everything is going to happen to their home, most of those people that have the home insurance, they don't have life insurance. Yeah. So the m most important thing other than your family and more important than your home, other than your family is, is, your, and should be your life your, insurance policy. Yeah. Should be your life insurance policy. So what is, do you have any stats? Like what is the number of people in the U S that have one or don't have one? Just uh, la last I, I read about, um, 64% of individuals are underinsured. Um, more than 46% of Americans don't have any insurance. And a lot and of we're not talking like health insurance, no, no, we're talking life insurance, like, life, yeah, life insurance, insurance. Life insurance. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, per uh, LIMRA, which is the Life Insurance Management Research Association, they're huge, do a yeah. lot of research on, on life insurance. Um, most individuals just don't have the right knowledge and um, aren't meeting with individuals to learn about this. And, you know, the, the industry needs more practitioners to get this product in front of people. So do you think like, I'm just thinking about the real estate space, like it's it's always shocking to me, but not. 51% of people in the US own a home, 49% rent. And there are people that are just generational renters. And I'm not making that wrong. Like no. like a lot of people I know own investment properties, me included, like somebody's gotta rent those places out. That's right. Um, so do you think do you think for that group and the people that are just maybe underinsured or just don't have, is it just a lack of a, awareness? You said priorities. It's priorities, like, you know. Like but if they wait for like somebody to go wrong, then it doesn't matter. They're already in trouble. That's right. That's right. So maybe this is part of the reason why you got this marketing company. So tell us about how how do you get the word out? Um, well, it's, it's really in, it's not about getting the word out because I believe individuals recognize that life insurance exists. It's about them making a priority to actually learn about how it works, yeah. what type of product to get, who to get it from. Um, and I say priorities because right now we're easily spending 200 bucks a month for cable and all those people that have all the channels they want to watch, they don't have life insurance. And with 200 bucks, you could easily get a, a million plus dollar policy. If it's term, you can get a policy similar to the one that was recommended to you when you were younger to have savings yep. component to yep. it. Um, you know, we're easily willing to go get a new cell phone when our current one works perfectly fine, but we don't have life insurance. So I believe it comes down to priority. It yeah, comes five, down to lack five of Five pairs of Air Jordans, but like, you just nailed <laughs> you know it, what man. I mean? But five like, pairs but of like Air no Jordans. money in their savings account. That's right. Like, okay. That's right. That's okay. right. All right. So let's, let's totally switch gears. Uh, what is the failure rate like right now in the insurance business? Um, you know, I haven't looked at the most recent stats, but from experience, uh, roughly about seven out of 10 agents would fail joining this industry. And in what time period? Within their first year. The average agent makes about 45 to just under $50,000 of income. Yeah. That's the average agent. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I mean, for the people that are listening to this, like, think about it. 90% failure rate in small business, right? Yeah. There's 28 million businesses right now in the US, right? Only 4% of them do more than a million dollars a year in revenue. That's right. Right. It's a really small number. And that other group, man, is just churning all the time. That's so right. I'm not sure. Actually, I think seven out of 10 is actually 
pretty good odds compared to real estate. It's like 87%. Yeah. I mean, industry wise, it's probably, I was going to say the, the one out of 10, but based on experience of just, you know, I've, I've recruited and worked with well over two, 3000 agents. Um, yeah. and our goal is to, to do our best to make sure that they don't fail. Well, of I mean, course, that's what we want to do. So, so let's talk about that because again, we started this by saying sales is sales, business is business, marketing is marketing, helping clients, knowing what to say, knowing how to say, like all that stuff is completely transferable in my mind to everybody in sales. So tell us about what are the most important success principles of a great insurance broker? Uh, the, the first is uh, for even insurance agents. And yeah. I want to just yeah, thank differentiate you. Thank that you. for Please. you, Tom. Please. You know, broker is where you're offering every every care or mor multiple carriers mm -hmm. and uh, agent. You're usually with with one or two companies. Uh, unlike the real estate space, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. unlike thank the real you. estate, because I also have a California broker's license. Yeah. And unlike the real estate space in the insurance industry, you actually just get one license and you can choose to become a broker or an agent, which is pretty Got unique. It. But um, I'll share with you that the, the, the number one reason why I believe individuals fail in sales or, or in the financial services sector is because most people start and they chase the paper and not chase the dream. And when you join an industry just trying to count how much money you're going to make, how much commissions, how much clothes you're going to have, yeah. that pressure and that vulnerability is going to be very transparent to your prospects and to your client. Yes. And nobody wants to be sold a policy. Mm -hmm. They want to be provided a solution. And nobody insurance nobody likes commission breath. There you go. I'm going to get breath. you, right? That's I'm going to get I you. Like this that. is a deal. I like commission breath. I got I a like hot that. prospect. Like nobody likes that, right? No, I like that. You know, we, we actually, in our organization, none of our guys get paid on commissions. We get paid based on performance. Yep. Um, so really just rewarding and changing the mindset. Yeah. Um, we're compensated for the services that we provide. And is that fair? Which, yeah. of course, uh, when you break it down, it does come out to a commission. But sure. But it's uh, but we're, again, we're paid how on you, performance. How you, how, the, the, the words that we choose, right? Nobody likes to prospect, but everybody likes to book appointments. That's right. Right? So I'm That's like, right. well, then don't prospect. But make sure you book appointments every That's day. Right, yeah. And they're we'll like, how do I possible. do that? I'm like, get on the damn phone, right? Yeah. So, so success principles, right? Uh, obviously, it sounds like it's a mindset thing. Don't be chasing money, right? That's very universal. Chase the dream. Yeah, well, the, the money will follow. So, what else? What like if I'm if I'm going to become an in, a successful you. insurance salesperson? Yeah. What do I have to do every day? Um, you know, learn learn or master how to turn suspects into prospects and prospects into clients. You know, everyone yeah. is is immediately thinking about prospecting, prospecting first, yeah. first learn suspecting. Yeah. So suspecting is yeah, allowing yeah. you to just pick anybody and then convert them to being a prospect, yeah. asking the right questions. Are they ideal for, for your mm -hmm. product or for your need? And then from the prospect to turning to a client, um, you know, we, we believe that if, if, if you don't go, you don't know. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is so many individuals that are new to sales or they want to prospect, they're always looking for the shortcut or they come in yeah. and carry yeah. this ego with what they did prior to sales or prior to this new endeavor. And they try to apply whatever worked in that field to this one. And it doesn't. I mean, yeah. this is literally, you, you, it's an appointment game and you can't have an appointment game without a prospecting mindset. And you got to learn to love the suspects to start to find the prospects. Man, I'm telling you, every sale. So I, I interviewed recently a buddy of mine. His name is Michael Polsler. Michael, awesome. his family and their partners, they own basically a third of the globe as the wow. national franchiser for Remax. So they have, there's 120,000-ish agents in Remax. 40,000 are theirs. Wow. You with me? Amazing. And he, I said, so how'd you get started? He said, I barely got out of high school. My dad said, here's a phone book. Here is every real estate company that currently isn't Remax. Call all of them and get an appointment for us to have coffee. Wow. And that's how we got started. Today, today he's running this global empire and killing it, but it's a appointment setting game, whether you're selling franchises, insurance, that's a cool story. you know, title, escrow, mortgage, whatever it is, it's all about appointments. Okay, right. so right mindset, right? Suspects to prospects, <laughs> prospects to clients. I love that. Tell us, tell us. Why do those that fail, fail? Um, from what I've noticed, people that fail is because they just didn't want it bad enough. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a strong believer that everything that we have wanted as humans and as people, we've been able to achieve. If you yeah. really want it. I mean, yeah. I know everyone's like, I want that Ferrari. I want the house on the hill. I want the They're ocean view. They're totally full of shit. They don't actually. I don't, I don't know. know. I was, I was saying, you, people, they, they you say could have stuff. it. If you want it, you could have it. I know. You guys just, just put, in, yeah. put in the work. But most people okay, fail. No, no, no. But you say that, but you, you got to put in the work. No, no. You got to put in the That's work. Right. Like right. nobody gets that stuff right. on Easy Street. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm interrupting. No, Go. no, no, you're not interrupting, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, our, our business is when when you plug into a successful shop, you see a lot of the success, you see yeah. you see the winners already. And one thing that new agents don't recognize is that you got to be willing to do what people have done to do what they're doing today. And they don't get that part. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I call it a microwave mindset. 
um, especially with the younger yeah. generations, they want everything like at a snap of a finger, not recognizing the process and the journey, you know, uh, like shout out to Gary V. Yeah. So many of the younger folks that know Gary V now, they don't know, like, you know, I mean, I know you, you've known the guy for over 10 years. I've yeah. seen some of your footage with him before he yeah. was the big Gary that everyone yeah. knows today. No books and selling wine. And shout out to you, man, because yep. I think you actually gave him a platform a long time ago too, which is pretty cool, yeah, Tom. Yeah, a little bit, little but, bit. But, but there's an example, you know, if, if you go back to 20 plus years wine library or yourself 30 plus mm -hmm. years in the yep. industry and people who don't know that history, they see all the success that you've built today and not know the journey and the process yep. of getting there. So. Yeah. That's what it is. So, so you think most people, and it's funny you say young people, because like, how old are you? I'm, I, I'm a spring chicken, man. I'm 39 years old, but exactly. I consider myself still a kid. Not, not according to, to most, but I, I grew up in the industry serving those that are 65 yeah. and older. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. very blessed to have worked with the baby boomer generation. Yeah. Um, I actually have a designation called certified senior advisor. So I know all about uh, gerontology, aging process, really unique stuff for, for someone in their early 20s to learn. Yes. But I needed to know it to master my business because my process aspects were all on Medicare. What an interesting distinction for everybody. I hope they picked up on this. Like the more obscure, interesting solution-based things that you learn for your prospects, they become clients. Absolutely. When you're like I said, I've always told people like when when you say things like I think yeah. You're not an expert. That's when you right. say, I know, right. and you can back it up with case studies, data, examples, right? Whether they're 65 or 602 or 15, That's it doesn't right. matter. Like just, you got to know your stuff. That's right. So most people fail because they they lack patience. That's one of it. Lack patience. Why um, else do they fail? Uh, not having the right platform, not believing in the product. I mean, mm -hmm. how many agents out there that are listening to this are struggling as a financial advisor or insurance agent and don't have the products that they're selling? Yeah. So many of them. And I believe you cannot sell what you don't own. Yeah. 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 I'm listen, I'm old school. I think of like, you know, okay, you work at BMW. Why are you driving a Toyota? Like, you know, like, what is, like, right? Like it's, great just, it's just, you're out of it. Like, I don't know. I don't know if out of integrity is maybe a strong way to describe it, but like, you don't love your product. Rule number one That's is right. you got to love your product. That's you got to right. love your customer, right? That's right. That's right. You got to believe Interesting. in it. You know, I, I educate a lot of our newer agents. Once you get that policy for yourself or your family, put it in your briefcase, put it in your bag, carry it with you. Yep. This way, if you give a recommendation to a prospect or client they're not sure about it or they want to second guess it or get another opinion, bring your policy on. Say, hey, look, if it's good for me, good for my family, good for X, Y, Z, then obviously you believe in it, it's good for them. Yeah. 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 Um, do you think, like, how is the insurance industry viewed by most consumers? Um, well, I'll share with you my mom. Um, she, as a consumer, when I told her I was going to join the industry, she said, you're going to be broke. Um, and she said, you're going to struggle. Yeah. And it's not because she's not a huge raving fan for my success, but she was sharing with me what, what her stereotype was of the, of the industry. Of course. And I, I'll never forget. Uh, I said, why do you feel that way? And she said, Cena, because our insurance agent is struggling. Yeah. And uh, I was defensive. I said, well, maybe you should get a new agent. Um, which that response didn't go too well. But I said, that always Mom, goes I, over well when you're 23 I, and you're talking to your immigrant I, mother who's right, come to agree right. to you. So, so I, I made all this happen. I, I asked her, I said, why is it yeah. that, that, you, that you're saying he's broke or struggling? And I'll never forget this, but she said, you know what, Sina, when he comes over to do a policy review, um, he has, sometimes he has stains on his shirt. He had a hole in his sweater. He just didn't give the appearance of success. Yeah. And a lot of agents, I totally get it. When you're new to sales, new to commission, you're probably coming in struggling. You're probably looking for yep. a better opportunity, yep. but still do your best to present yourself with that first impression um, at the peak. You know, if, if you got if you got wrinkles on your, on your clothes, go get an iron. If you can't afford to dry clean it, you yep. can still iron it yourself. Exactly. If you don't have a blazer, it's okay. If you don't have a tie, it's okay, but still look presentable. Yep. And um, those words really carried carried a lot of weight with me. So I always made sure to dress to impress. And, um, you know, some people say fake it till you make it. And it, sometimes maybe you need to, as long as you're doing it with, with the right integrity. Yeah. I think it's intent, right? Yeah, like fake it right. till you make it is like intent. Like, right. is this, is my intention to like win you over that's or is right. my intention to make a difference? That's right. Am I trying to close a deal right. or am I trying to help you because you got a problem? I, can, I mean, you know, it's, it's intent, that's right. right? So, uh, interesting. Your mom, where'd yes. she come from? Uh, my, my mom migrated from Iran in 1979, right I, before the revolution. And I assume that, yeah. When you said 79, I was like, I knew because I have so many friends, like very similar. So God bless yeah. you guys. Very similar Thank situation, you. right? Thank you. Um, what was it like for her coming to America at that It time? was amazing. Um, my mom, she, she moved out here. Uh, we rented a one bedroom. We rented a room in a two bedroom apartment from a young couple in their 20s in Northridge. Um, our rent was like 250 bucks from what she's told me. I was, I was, you know, too young to really recognize it, but she, her first job was a Jack in the box. They'd give her, they'd give her a free lunch work in there. She'd bring it home for my sister and I, we really had humble beginnings. And what I love about my mom is that she always 
gave us the confidence that we have everything we need. We just didn't know what we didn't have until we were older. Yeah. And I love this lady. And today, um, she's she's now a, a real estate, uh, you know, in my eyes, a real Phenom. estate tycoon. I mean, I, yeah. I, she runs one of the largest property management companies yep. in San Francisco. Thank you to you, Tom. I'm not exaggerating. You've been a huge influence for her. Before I had the opportunity of meeting with you, she would tell me all about you, all about Tom Ferry. And I said, Mom, who is this Tom Ferry guy that you just brag about nonstop? Because yeah. I grew up listening to Tony Robbins. Yeah. Then around, I don't know, 16, 17, I started listening to Tom about Tom Ferry philosophy. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I got this wake up kick ass repeat shirt. I got a couple of those at my house that my mom would send me and I'd wear and just take pictures and send them to her. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've so impacted so big, many people. Big shout out to mom listening to this, by the <laughs> Thanks, way. Tom. So, so let's talk about like opportunities for growth. Like if you wanted to scale a business today, yeah. knowing what you know now, right? And I want to go, I'm going to talk prospecting too in a minute, but I want sure. just bigger picture. Like, okay, you're, you're coaching somebody who's in sales. Yeah. How do you help them scale? Well, uh, f first, we need to find out what the challenge is. That's what's holding them back from scaling. You know, mm -hmm. usually, usually there is objections or blockers that's creating what maybe John Maxwell refers to a lid yep. holding us back. So we got to break that lid. But um, think outside the box. Uh, you know, definitely leverage, in my opinion, social media strategy yep. that's so underutilized today. Yep. Um, you know, it's like comparing it to Google AdWords years ago, 10 years ago, it was like so yes. inexpensive. Now you can spend six to eight bucks per click for certain words, maybe right. even more. People aren't leveraging social media strategy, um, connecting, um, building all those connections, uh, centers of influence. You know, the, the way to scale is always thinking about quantity and you need to have more individuals, in my opinion, to help you leverage. Yeah. to be able to scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk Let's talk prospecting and then let's come back to social. Sure. So, all right, so I'm your client. I'm a new agent. Tell me about my prospecting schedule. What do I have to do? Um, well, right now, what does your prospecting schedule look like? First, let's see what you're doing. I'm, uh, I'm spending 30 minutes to an hour a day, man, but I'm just really busy. I got all this stuff I'm trying to learn. Uh, I just don't feel like I'm ready yet. So I just, I, I'm not comfortable making the calls. Okay. Um, first, uh, I, I, if you wait till you're ready, I think you're going to wait forever. And I believe that you agree with me. Yeah. 30 minutes to an hour for anyone who's new to pro prospect is not enough. Mm -hmm. Prospecting is your number one priority when you're new. Yep. You got to love, learn to love the prospecting process. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there's a line that they say, eat the frog. Right. So, Brian, so, so Brian Tracy. there yep. you go. You eat the frog by Brian Tracy. So do everything that you hate to do, which usually is prospecting for most people and do that well. Um, you know, I, I love the fact that people want to learn all these products or learn about their craft. But if you don't have people to be in front of to present all you've learned, yeah. how are you going to apply it? Yeah. So um, prospecting is key, you know, yes. and, and getting out there. You know, if, if, if you hate the phones, one, learn to love the phones, because I believe that the phones has made more people success than any other piece of technology. Mm -hmm. um, and if the phones isn't your forte, then what is? And yeah. if you don't have an answer to that, then you better start somewhere. Yeah, You know, it's it, people who are playing that waiting game. I, it, the only people that should wait and be okay with that is servers. And I don't say that disrespectfully because I was yep. a server going through college. Yep. W you wait for tips. Yeah. You're a waiter for tips. Yep. You can't wait in sales. You can't wait as an entrepreneur. No way. Yeah. No way. Man, it's so funny as you're saying this, like I, I can hear so many of my mentors that have said similar things to me. Like we follow each other on Instagram, by, by the way. Thank so you. tell them your Instagram handle. So they follow. CEO accredited. And I'll tell you more about where yeah, yeah. CEO comes from later. But yeah, my Instagram is CEO accredited. So, so we follow each other on Instagram and you're doing stories. I'm doing stories. We're always sharing, you know, what's going on in our world and how we're helping people. Um, over this last weekend, I probably had like four people in a row. Cause I just said like in my Instagram stories, where are you stuck? And people are like prospecting. And I literally would respond like this. Good news, the government is hiring. Wow. Go get a job with the government. If you're in sales and you're afraid of the phone, go get a job with the government. Wow. You need to get over your shit. No yeah. one cares, man. Right. We are in a full contact sport. The more contact you make, the more money you make. I love Period, it, end of story. I love it. And then I think like David Goggins, who you know, you've know you seen and right, and I'm sure read his book and listened to me, like, he literally said to me in an interview like this, I'm like, David, somebody's afraid to make phone calls. What do they do? And he's like, you should make like 400 calls a day until you're bleeding. Like just do it over and you'll get over it. I, I, I agree with you. You know, I, I, I read a piece the other day um, that was written by a gentleman. I don't want to make the mistake, but I believe it was Gary uh, Goodman or Gary Godman. And he mentioned that 
prospecting is like shaving. You got to do it every day. Yeah. And I know I got a beard right now, so <laughs> I, I don't want to use that the wrong way, but beards are in style. <laughs> yeah. There was a long time to where- but we when trim, you, we trim. There was a long time where, where, where if you carried a beard, it was like a sign of laziness, kind of, yes. right? Yeah. Now, no, now you got to do it yeah. the Tom Ferry way, so it's okay. But you know, um, you got to prospect every day. Yeah. And those that are veterans and have really built their, their business and their foundation, yeah, they're probably referral-based or they have enough clientele that are giving them business. Yeah. But if you go back, they didn't start that way. They, they were all, killer prospectors. They were all doing this. They were knocking on doors. They were meeting, ne networking. It doesn't matter, but you got to talk to a lot of people. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk social media marketing. Uh, in my research, there has never been an industry with more constraints on marketing than big the time. insurance business, big man. Time. Like, big time. So what do you do in your space? Because you got to follow the rules, you got to follow right. the guidelines, That's but you right. also got to get your word out. That's right. What do you do? Uh, you know, st start to share your experience um, with, with, your, with your following, with the public, uh, with, with your social media um, network. Mm -hmm. Share what it is that you're doing. You don't have to specifically go into product detail that's going to create some challenges. You don't have to show any specific branding of a carrier that you might need their permission to show. But nothing's wrong with documenting what your day is like. If, if you are a new agent, why not create that documentation not only for yourself, but for the team that you might lead yeah. in the future and you have all this material to reference on. Also, uh, if you don't know what you're doing and you're new and you document this, you can go back and reflect on, on your mistakes. Fail yep. forward, right? Yep. It, nothing's wrong with, with failing. That's most successful people. They fail to be successful. Yeah. So, you know, I, I start in the business to where cell phones were very expensive. I, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the beeper generation, by the way, Tom. Yeah. So yep. shout out to, to the beeper and pager generation. But, you know, we, we, you had to make good money to have cell phones. Uh, in 2003. And as a rookie agent who's 23 and broke, a cell phone was not in the picture in the beginning. So talk about using a regular landline or having to use pay phones while you're in the field. Um, Thomas Guide, Atlas Guide was the way I was getting to appointments. Yep. You know, so many individuals that are starting the industry now, they think that it's tough. Go back 15, 20 years ago and you would have never been able to even make it a day yeah. or two. Yeah. So right now, guys, if you're listening, if you're new to sales, new to entrepreneurship, there has never been a more abundant opportunity. You just got to start to change that mindset. It's interesting you talk about documenting. So uh, and Gary V, Gary V's sister, Liz, big yes. shout out to Liz, right? Yeah. Who I met and, and we probably had, I don't know, four or five months where she had to text me every day, like just a little friendly accountability, awesome. right? And she was killing it. One of the things that she did right as a brand new agent in New Jersey, right? Was she was literally with her phone every day saying, I'm at this open house, hey, I'm previewing property. Like right. she was showing people what she did. That's right. And all of a sudden now her friends had this awareness like, oh, Liz sells real estate. That's right. Like I always, you know, we know each other, we got kids, we school, whatever, our history, but now they're seeing you're in the field, 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 and guess what starts to happen? Pros you right? start getting referrals. People prospects, start getting referrals, yeah. right? That's right. And simultaneously, I made her call the hardest lead sources in all of real estate in her space, in her marketplace. Wow. And I said, look, I don't care if you get a single appointment. What I want you to do is call the hardest lead sources because when you start winning them, that's right. everybody else is easy. Wow. And she, you know, in the beginning, she was like, oh man, this is really hard, Tom. Like, we're just texting back and forth. Oh, this is really hard. I got my butt kicked today. This person totally rejected me. And I'm like, but what did you learn? I love it. What, what was the lesson? What did they say? Start documenting the objections you get. Start documenting the upsets that they're having. Because right. then you can turn that into a story saying, right. I met with 165 people that tried to sell and it didn't work out. And here were the seven things that caused them the most worry. And if I can help you avoid these seven, like she was like, oh, that's brilliant. I'm like, yeah, right? And she but, would have never been there if she didn't do that. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, so like so that. wrapping up, um, you've shared a lot of insight here. I'm super fascinated by the insurance industry. And, you know, obviously a lot of people know that, you know, we're, we're helping other industries mainly through right now, like friends and people that we know, like, and trust. Cause we the look for the similarities. Needs you, Tom. I was going to say that the industry needs you. I, I, I think it needs you more, yeah. <laughs> but I'll take it. We'll do it together. My friend. Um, I would just ask that you share like, just what are some of the things that you do to keep yourself so fired up? Cause man, you're like, people say the same thing to me, man, you're always so positive. Like, Dude, you're always super fired up. What do you do? Um, I love this question because I don't feel as fired up as people sense that, but sure. I am incredibly grateful. Yeah. I'm incredibly grateful for the smallest of things that people take for granted. You yeah. know, being able to just tie your shoes, to get out of bed, 
to uh, brush your teeth. I mean, I know it sounds kind of dumb and cliche or whatnot, but those are so important to me because there's so many people that would do anything, give any amount of money to be able to do some of those things that seem so minuscule to us. Yeah. And this industry really gave me that mindset because yeah. Um, when you're in the financial service, especially the insurance space for 15 plus years, you've serviced a lot of claims. You've been to a lot of funerals. You've seen a lot yeah. of loss. Morbidity, mortality is real. Life happens. Yeah. And I want you to know if anyone's listening right now and you are not fired up and you think you got it bad or you got some challenges, um, you need to really look outside the box and understand that there is so many people that are in line that would trade their life with you in a heartbeat, regardless of how bad you feel you got it. And when you recognize and see life with that perspective, how could you not be fired up? Yeah. I mean, we I, we live in the greatest era and the greatest time, Tom. So uh, if you're not fired up, stop stop asking why and ask why not. Yeah, love it, man. There's nothing I can say after that, brother. Thank you so Thank much, you, Tom. Dude. Thank totally you so much, man. Thank it. you. Hey, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Cena. Uh, again, as I mentioned to you at the very beginning, the guy's got energy, he's got passion, he's got charisma. And here's the thing, it's all stuff that he decided to generate. And I hope if there was one thing above all else after listening to this interview that you get is you can create that too. So you get to choose every single day how you want to be. So my advice to you, my friend, is decide with power. Thank you so much for listening and I'll look forward to talking to you soon. If you want more information about this episode, including my show notes, mentions, links, and everything else, make sure you visit tomferry.com slash podcast. That's tomferry.com slash podcast. Thanks again and talk to you soon.